smelling the blood. The blood is thick and sweet, and once the rat tastes it, it wants it more than anything else. This is the time to let the rat free. He will go hunting out rats. He knows where they live, where they go to eat. He knows all their habits. He prefers rats to eating garbage. This is the story of a woman that was killed by a serial killer and the sister of the woman that wanted revenge for her sister's murder. This serial killer messed with the wrong family. The cops wouldn't catch him, so they went to work to attempt to lure this killer in. Hello, my name is Holly, and this is the Murder She Shed, the place we discuss the dead right from my she shed. No subscribe, do subscribe, I don't care, but either way, come join me for this story right from my crime lair. Tiffany Taylor was street smart. She had to be in order to survive. Two of her boyfriends had already been killed on the streets of Jersey City. One of her boyfriends, she had to wash his brains off of her doorstep after he was shot in the head right in front of her. When she was able to move to Orlando, Florida at the ripe age of 18, she believed her future was looking up. Tiffany was able to start college in Florida. She studied psychology and music and she danced professionally in stage shows. Then suddenly she realized she was pregnant and had to drop out of college, unfortunately. She pretty much gave up at this point and just moved back home to Jersey. Soon after coming back to Jersey, Tiffany got hooked on drugs and had to find a way to support her habits. So, she decided prostitution was the answer. One day, Tiffany went over to a man's house with her friend. He answered and introduced himself as Khalil. She noticed he looked young. Tiffany was now 33. She thought to herself, this boy might be 20. Her friend had been hooking up with Khalil. They went in and started playing video games. Khalil seemed to enjoy Tiffany's company. A few days later, her friend told her that Khalil wanted to hook up with her. Tiffany told her friend, nah, he's too young. She guessed her friend had gave Khalil her number because he just kept texting her after that and offering to pay her for SEX. Eventually, she said yes, just because she knew he was young and she could probably rob him. After she got to his place, he gave her $200 up front. They then walked upstairs to his bedroom and she told him, well, I forgot the condoms in the car. And he didn't think nothing about it, so she just walked downstairs and drove away. That was easy, she thought, but later that choice would come back to haunt her. A few months later, Tiffany's mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Medical bills were piling up, so was the rent payment. As winter approached, they had to start living in their car, and Tiffany was worried about her mother having to fight off cancer, and then the cold weather as well. She needed to find a way to make quick cash. When a drug addict, a big guy that worked in construction, said he would pay her cash if she would get a constant supply of drugs for him. She agreed to do it. During this time, she kept getting texts from a number she did not recognize. The man just kept begging her for SEX. This wasn't uncommon for her to get random texts in her line of work. This stranger was texting her so much that she decided to get a new number. But somehow the man found her new number and just kept texting. The man kept offering her more and more money. She knew that they needed the cash, so she gave in and decided to meet him and perhaps just steal his money. 
So on November 15th, 2016, it was a brisk fall evening as she drove her car to their meetup spot. She pulled up to find a man dressed in a black sweatshirt, black gloves, and a black ski mask on. Now me, I would have been like, no, see ya. Not Tiffany. She said it was a cool day. And so she just figured he's dressed all in that because of how cool a day was. But no, some man don't show his face to me. He's not getting in my freaking car. I'm sorry. There's something wrong with that. Most girls would think that, but not Tiffany. I guess she was used to odd things. I don't know. Never been to Jersey City. So I don't know. Not judging you because I don't know. But we in Oklahoma, when we greet somebody, we show our face. So she just pulled over and he opened the car door and slid right into that passenger seat. After a few minutes of driving, he asked her if she could pull over so he could go to the bathroom. But when they stopped, everything went black. She wouldn't remember anything else to when she woke up to a man that had her in a chokehold and was R-A-P-ing her. He thought he might have hit her in the head because somehow she had lost consciousness. As she opened her eyes, she seen a familiar face. It was Khalil, the young man that she had stole money from. He said to Tiffany, do you recognize me? She said, hey, I can give your money back. Please don't hurt me. So on all of his victims, you're going to find out that he takes duct tape and he wraps it all the way around their head, all the way up to their nose. I don't even know how they breathe, but he wrapped them all up and he had her in handcuffs like that. He choked her several times and rap her several times and then... She somehow was able, she said it got moist down here and she was able to talk to him better after this. And and she begged him not to hurt her and that she would give his money back or, or whatever, whatever he needed. It said she had plans going through her head like plan A, plan B. She thought of a plan that was actually really genius. Tiffany was actually four months pregnant during this time, and so she told Khalil that she was pregnant, to which he responded, I know, which I think is totally creepy because if you're four months pregnant, you're not showing. How did he know? Was he stalking her? Just creepy to me. She politely asked if he could loosen her handcuffs. They were hurting her, and her plan worked because he did do that. And what he didn't know is that she was double-jointed. Once he agreed to loosen her cuffs, she knew he was weak and that she could outsmart him. She told him, hey, I left my phone back at the Ritz in room 32. And our entire phone conversation was on it. Khalil said, well, we got to go get that phone. He drove her to the Ritz. What Khalil didn't know was room 32 was where the muscled drug addict was staying that she supplied drugs for. While they were driving back to the Ritz, Tiffany was able to fold her thumb into her palm and pull her hand free from the cuff. As they pulled up to the Ritz, she slipped her hand back into the cuff. She knew that she could easily slip it back out. Khalil got out and then he pulled Tiffany out of the back seat. He wrapped a jacket around her shoulders and told her he would be following a few feet behind her. So don't pull any stunts. She knew that drug addict would be eager for his drugs and open the door immediately. He often would see her pull up in the parking lot outside and knew exactly when she was there. Just as Tiffany had planned, He swung the door open. She ran in and slammed the door. Khalil tried to open the door. It was now locked and he couldn't get in. Tiffany opened the curtain to the window right by the front door and showed Khalil her hand that was now free from the handcuff. And he just freaked out and took off running. Tiffany wouldn't learn till later that she had outsmarted a serial killer. After he left, she called the cops. She told them what happened and even told them the name of her attacker, Khalil Willer Weaver. The officers didn't believe her. They just accused her of prostitution and threatened to arrest her. 
you got to listen to this actual footage of the cops coming to the Ritz and talking to Tiffany. The cop actually had the gall to say, why did you let him duct tape you? What injuries do you, what, what, what injuries do you have? Look at my face and the duct tape. For the what? For the duct tape, my face. When did he duct tape you? Huh? In the car? In the car. So you let him duct tape you or what happened? I just need yeah, to know. He put the handcuffs on me first. He choked me out and after he showed me the one hand. What was the, all happened all happened in the car? Yeah. Where were you parked at this time? Um The gas station over there? No, it was by the gas station though. No. It was by the gas station? It was in this car. It was in his car. So he took the duct tape with him? Had to, yeah. And he just ran away? Ran away. Seven days after a close encounter. Khalil would kill again. Khalil had already murdered three women before the attack on Tiffany. Khalil had already murdered three women before the attack on Tiffany. Robin West had just turned 20. Her voice was so angelic. She had led the choir at church. She had just bought a lacy white dress to celebrate her 20th birthday and was headed to Jersey with friends in order to celebrate. Her body was burned Beyond recognition in a burn-up abandoned house, she'd been strangled and RIP'd. She was burned so badly that they didn't even know what she looked like. They had to use dental records to ID her. The firemen had actually came to the scene and started putting out the fire, and they didn't find her body till later. Weird thing is, Khalil was watching the firemen put out the fire. Yes, he came back and watched it. Thickening. Maya Diamba, only 15, with Khalil, met her through a social media app called Tag. And they met on October 7, 2016. He took her to her abandoned carriage house, R.A. Peter, and then strangled her, leaving her face down on the dirty floor. Her body was not found till 2019. Then, just a couple of weeks later, he murdered 33 year old Joanne Brown. Her family nicknamed her Billy Joe. She had been diagnosed with having bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. She met Khalil and was taken to another abandoned house. He wrapped her head in duct tape from her eyes down to her chin. He R.A.P'd her, then strangled her with a jacket. He left her body on the landing of the stairs. Tiffany's attack had been nearly a month after this. This leads us to Sarah Butler, whose family set a trap for the killer. She was very loved by many it was his mistake. He messed with the wrong girl. Sarah Butler was five when she discovered dance. She was walking with her big sister, Aaliyah, and their mother in Montclair, a suburb 15 miles west of Manhattan. They stopped at the window of Premier Dance Theater to watch a class. They walked inside and signed up. While Sarah's sister only attended a few classes, Sarah instantly fell in love with dance. She studied a fusion of ballet, modern jazz, and African dance. Sarah joined the Montclair High School Dance Company. At age 15, she joined Premier's Traveling Troupe. In June 2016, they competed in the Apollo Theater's famous Amateur Night. Sarah led her team to a third-place finish. Sarah was the first member of her family to attend college. Sarah created an account on TAG which is a social media site. So Khalil is called the tag killer because he used the social media site to meet some of these girls. And actually, Sarah Butler was one of those girls that he met through this site. She was lonely and looking for companionship because she was struggling to make friends. So that's how she ended up on this tagged site. Soon, Khalil hit her up. And he offered her $500 for XEX. She texts, you're not a serial killer, are you? Maybe that was her women's intuition. She should have listened to it. Sarah agreed to meet. At the last minute, she changed her mind. She must have been having doubts that something wasn't quite right. She stood him up. Two days later, she reconsidered. Sorry about the other day. I got really nervous, she texts. But your voice and your pick don't seem like a match. Khalil responded, I'm a really cool guy when you get to know me. So on November 22nd, 2016, she took a chance and agreed to meet him. He took Sarah to the same abandoned house. Joanne Brown's body was still laying on that second floor. 
It killed her exactly one month earlier, and her body was still lying there, still rotting. I don't know how Sarah didn't smell. Maybe she thought it was like an animal, but I don't know how she would agree to go there. I'm sure, it had to smell. It had to smell in there. I don't know. Khalil was wearing the same outfit he wore when he had attacked Tiffany. How very smart is he? After raping and killing Sarah, he dragged her body behind a trailer on the edge of the lot. He was sloppy. He allowed her heels to carve parallel trenches in the soft ground, leaving a track behind. He left sweatpants tied around her throat. When he removed the packing tape from her head, it ripped out red fibers from Sarah's hair extensions. He deposited the tape inside of her van. He covered her body with leaves and twigs. Her hands and feet were left exposed to the stars. Sarah was supposed to return home with the van at 8 p.m. When she didn't arrive, her sister Aaliyah just started texting friends, asking if anyone had seen her sister. Three days later, Sarah's van was spotted by one of her friends, and she called Aaliyah and authorities. Aaliyah noticed Sarah's hair extension stuck to the duct tape that had been thrown on the ground, even before the police did. She let out a scream because she knew this meant Sarah was not just missing, but in danger. The two women drove to Sarah's house after this and opened Sarah's laptop. Aaliyah and Sarah were very close, so she knew all of her sister's passwords. She logged into Sarah's account on TAG and found the conversation she had with Khalil. Khalil's account name was Little Yacht Rock. This is when Aaliyah, Sarah's friend, and one of Aaliyah's friends came up with a plan. Aaliyah was going to make a tagged account and they were going to lure the killer in. After making the account, they found his profile and clicked a button on his profile, sending him a thumbs up. They were standing inside the police station on November 26 when Aaliyah received a text on TAG. It was Khalil. He began by offering cash for SEX. He said his name was Taj. He needed to meet soon before he left for work. They smiled at each other because they knew they got him. Aaliyah baited the hook. She wanted to meet for SEX, she said, and she was desperate for money. After hanging up, they went to the cops inside the station and described the planned meeting. The three women stayed there. Police sent two detectives instead. But they had to let him go that day because they couldn't find any evidence on that particular day. But this led them to who the killer was. They knew who he was now. And so they decided to trace his phone. And he had left a digital trail right to Sarah's body. They were able to trace each murder the same way except for Maya. These ladies, oh my gosh, they were true heroes. Sarah would have been so proud of them. Without them, he may be in, out there still killing. Who knows? He did such a great job at luring this guy in. I was just amazed. It's an amazing story of sister's love. And I think it's beautiful. And I'm so glad that they were able to stop him. Not only were they heroes, but Tiffany was as well. She was a hero because she was able to testify against him. And she knew 100% that he was the guy. And this put him in prison. Between all of these ladies, they took this man down. I love it. It's awesome. On December 19, 2019, Khalil Willer Weaver was found guilty of 11 felonies, including murder, attempted murder, kidnapping, and aggravated arson. Each murder count carries a sentence of life in prison. He was just charged with Maya's murder in April of 2022, just recently. Thank you guys for joining me in the Murder She Shed for Wacky World Wednesday. As usual, I will leave my bloopers. Thanks for all your love and support. And I want to say something. My daughter-in-law sent me a pic of her grandma watching my channel. Her grandma. The picture was so cute. I wanted to give her grandma a shout out. Hi, grandma. Thank you for supporting me. And guess what? Last time I looked, we we're like at 834 subscribers. Ah, I can't believe it. I can't even believe I have one subscriber, much less 834. I'm just in awe because I'm thinking, God, who wants to watch this crazy chick? I mean, I can see my son being the one subscriber. One of my sons, my other one won't even watch me. 
But I can see my one son being my only subscriber and maybe grandma. Grandma, you're faithful. Other than that, I can't believe that the other 832 of you have subscribed. But I'm so happy and I love y'all so much. Y'all are such a blessing to me. And y'all make my day. Your comments and your love. Well, I'm just going to tell you bye. And here's my bloopers. Love y'all. Bye. Hello, my name is Holly. Welcome to the Murder She Show. Hello, my name is Holly. And this is the Murder She Shed. I kicked my table. One of her boyfriends had to wash his brains off of her doorstep. Sorry, I forget. Most people don't say wash. W wash is how you people say it. Wash. I'll try to say wash in this video. We'll try. I just have a habit of saying wash, wash rag, washing machine, wash everything. He had to wa wash, wash, not wash, what wash. Sorry, wash. Oh man, Lord Jesus, help me. Brisk fall evening. Evening. What kind of word is that? Evening. And her plan worked because he. Crazy chick you don't want to meet ever. Now my husband put up with me for 30 years. We celebrated our anniversary last night, our 30 year anniversary. Uh, he took me to a place where, Lord Kevin, you take me out to eat. And it was an expensive place, but I was like, okay, you take me out to eat and I end up having to cook. Like they have this little heater thing at the table and you grill your own meat. I was like, here I am, have an opportunity to get away from cooking. And you take me to a place I have to grill my own meat. I paid a lot of money to do this. I think he got ripped off. Shouldn't have to cook your own food. No, I mean, it was good food. It was salmon and steak. It was all kinds of stuff. Chicken. I don't know what all. Just all kinds of shrimp. I don't know. But I've been cooking for 30 years. I'm tired. Tired. At least take me to a place where I don't have to cook my own food. I love you, honey. You're so good. He did buy me a necklace and earrings, so I can't complain. It was really pretty. I don't got them on right now, but they're really pretty. Simon's going to tell you bye. And he loves y'all. Hope y'all have a great week. Tell him bye, Simon.